Hello, everybody. Um, I want to introduce myself. My name is Patrick. I'm a JavaScript engineer at Runtastic. So you probably have heard about us. We are making running apps and bodyweight apps. And I am currently involved in a feature team where we're using React Native. And we embed React Native in our existing applications. And one of the nice things about React is that we have our very nice declarative APIs, and we have our like, top-down architecture with uh, unidirectional throw. But one thing which really bugs me is yeah, side effects. How do we dispatch all these HTTP requests? Of course, I've been talking to a lot of people here, and most of them are using thunks, like just an action creator which returns some kind of promise. And then you need a middleware which handles promises. And they have some downsides. They are quite easy to understand. But what I'm going to talk about are Redux sagas. Uh, first of all, who has heard about Redux sagas? Just OK, quite a few people. But strangely, a lot of people are like, mm, I, uh, I, I, it's nice on the paper, but I don't have an idea how this works, especially because they are using generators. So. It's a middleware to declaratively control async behavior in a synchronous style. And this is where, yeah, generator functions are super important. Um, I will go into the syntax right away, just uh, some features, what it does. Um, it enables you to uh, structure your code in the thread-like behavior. So you can fork some code over there, and you can like do your async calls in a declarative way uh, with effects. It provides mechanisms to manage async concurrency, so you can also make um, sagas dependent on each other, and you can like let them talk through actions. And uh, yeah, it makes action creators pure, so you don't have to think about, if I call an action creator, does it return a promise? Does it return an, just a normal object, whatever? So this is very useful. And they're composable. This is super awesome. Uh, I will show you in a minute. And yeah, but how does this work? First of all, we need generators. And generators are not um, like officially in the spec yet. So um, I will go into the syntax. So you have a function asterisk. In this example, account generator. And what it does, a generator creates an iterator object. And this iterator object starts with a start value, which is defined with the parameter until right here. So. Uh, the special thing about a generator is that it can yield a value. Yielding is similar to a return value, but you can yield multiple values. So a function can continuously return multiple values, which is, uh, if people are quite familiar with observables, uh, they are also working uh, kind of the same way. So you have a stream of data coming out of the generators. And the iterator object created by your generator function also has some utilities like this. Um, like the method next, which returns the next yielded value. And um, the value returned by next can also contain a property done, which tells you if the function, like the generator function, reached the end uh, of the generator. And there are special yield uh, keywords, like the yield asterisk is very interesting for composing uh, different generators. So if you say yield asterisk, and um, you use a generator, then it will yield all the yielded values of this generator. Sounds a little bit complicated, but it's actually just, yeah, you just get all, all the output of the generator and yield it back uh, through the wrapping generator. So how does this work in a simple example? For instance, my requirements, I'm currently working on my, I don't know, uh, on my, uh, newsfeed app or whatever, and I want to fetch some data. So I have a function HTTP fetch. And on success, it returns you, or it dispatches an HTTP fetch success, and if it fails, with a failure. So we have our saga middleware, we have our root saga, and we have some uh, logic function which is called watch fetch. We start with the saga middleware. So of course we have a middleware which we have to put into our Redux store. And we do this by using the create saga middleware function. And we provide the, the entry point of our sagas in this middleware, which is called root saga. And yeah, the, all the time you need to initialize the store, so there. So the root saga, how does this look like? 
um, you have this, uh, like this generator which will yield effects. So if you're familiar with this concept that you're just describing async effects, uh, it's, uh, yeah, you can find it in many, like, like in languages like in Elm or something, where you have just a description of what shall be done. And the middleware is responsible of doing the work. So if you say, call me an async function, get me the output, get me the promise value, and then do something with it. So this is everything which is done asynchronously is only isolated and done in the middleware. This is super important and keep this in mind when you're using sagas. So how does the root saga look like? That's it. We have a yield which this pet which yields you a fork effect. The fork is uh, being provided by the Redux Saga library. And the fork describes, okay, fork me a process which is called watch fetch. And it gets a state and it gets a yeah, HTTP function to, to handle. And yeah, the first thing it will do, like you saw before, when you initialize the store, it will call this generator function, will get the first value, and then it sees, okay, this is a fork, so I need to, to make some, you know, callback wrapper and just do the thing which is dis uh, described in the effect. And this looks like this. So if you, if you would just uh, call this function fork and put it in console.lock, you will see this kind of thing. So you have uh, a very special context uh, attribute called Redux Saga IO, so it says it's some kind of uh, side effect, and describes the fork. So everything you have here is just a plain object. This is nothing magical. The only thing uh, which is magical is happening in the middleware, and you're not you're not touching that anyways. So, yeah. Then we have, yeah. So we have this fork, and the the interesting thing about fork is the middleware, uh, when it calls the fork, it will block the process. So when it starts the fork, it will wait for like it to complete, and uh, yeah, this is not ideal. I will uh, show you how you can do this uh, better later on. So how does this look like? So you have your watch fetch generator, and it looks very strange because we have an endless uh, loop in here while true, but this is fine in the generator context since uh, it will only run until the next yield statement. So if you have a yield statement, it will stop there, and as soon as you call the next in your iterator, which gets returned by your generator, yeah, I know it's like the huge brain fuck with the generators, then it will start working again. And then it goes back to the while and will wait for the next effect to, to happen. And here you can see we yield a take effect. That means tell the middleware if you get an action which is dispatched with the type HTTP fetch, then call me this procedure. Then this procedure should run. And then it will get the result and, and whatever it has to do. And in the end, you can see we uh, yield a call effect, which is basically just run the HTTP, um, the HTTP call, get me the data back. And then if it's successful, we just uh, dispatch. So put will tell the middleware to dispatch it in the store. and. Yeah, that's it. So we can say fetch success and fetch failure. And since this is a generator and since this is like, uh, like a synchronous call, we have this try catch. The middleware will, there are two ways to, um, to communicate with the iterator. So you have the next function, which is like a good case. And then you have the throws function, which is more like throw me an error in this context of the generator. So here we go. So we have everything like nicely in a synchronous way. And it doesn't look like that, but it's super easy to test. It is much, much easier to test than an async func. And I will show you that later on. Yeah. The problem here is, as I said, the, this function would block because the call will first resolve and after the call it will put it and then yeah, the, the whole effects will take place. We want to make this unblocking, and uh, therefore you have certain utility functions, like take every. You can see this on the bottom. And take every is basically just a wrapper which says, um, whenever you get an HTTP fetch, 
fork me a new fetch saga. That's it. And then you also uh, provide, so this function also provides the action it already fetched. So if you say, the stored dispatch, uh, dispatch is an HTTP fetch, you get the action in the fetch saga as a last parameter. And then we do our chime and everything is nice and dandy. Yeah, and this is very important. The take every, of course, calls the, the many effects and yields many effects. So we need to compose it with the yield asterisk uh, keyword so it knows, okay, um, yeah, we get multiple effects from there and uh, there is multiple calls and multiple forks and whatsoever. So this is important, otherwise it doesn't work. So we start. For instance, our store dispatches an HTTP fetch action, and we say we want to query my Twitter page. So it goes into the Saga middleware. The Saga middleware sees, okay, I have some Saga, which makes a take every for my HTTP fetch. I hope everyone can follow me. And then it says, okay, I need to do my Saga call. So it will tell the watch fetch to, to take the action and it will resolve it. If it's successful, it will dispatch or it will put or will yield a put effect with HTTP fetch success. The Saga middleware takes this value and uh, then uh, dispatches it to the, uh, to the root reducer, which is then calculating a new state. So the important thing here is it is abstracting away the whole thing how how we communicate with the store. It just has the effects in between, and the Saga middleware knows the implementation details. So you could probably also use it for other architectures too. So one of the major advantages, in my opinion, is if you have an action func, you have like a promise, and a promise is not cancelable, and you cannot like influence it and you can also not build like complex subroutines. With sagas you can say you, disp you dispatch a specific action and another uh, saga can listen to this dispatched action. So you can make them communicate to each other and you can make really complex workflows which is not really easy possible with um, those action funks. And I mean we are using it for React Native and we also have a JSON API in the back end. And for that, the, the sagas are especially interesting because we have this self-discoverability uh, API and they have, you know, if you get data, you get links which says, okay, like pagination or whatever. And we can have like one single saga which is only responsible for fetching us this um, links or this, yeah, when we want to call the next link, we dispatch it with a special saga. It will resolve all the values since the data comes back normalized which has dispatch like a single action uh, adds to our store and it will put all the data in there and synchronize the, the store with the new entities. So for us, it's actually a perfect use case. So if you have our implementation there, I, I told you they are super easy to test and uh, the nice thing is we can test them completely synchronous. So what we do, we are actually, we are pretending to be the middleware. We just think about you're like a middleware in a Redux store and you uh, don't mind your business and then suddenly, whoa, someone yields a generator. Okay, cool. So we will create a generator over there. Um, can I actually? I cannot actually show my mouse in the presentation mode, right? Is this possible? Can I? Ah, uh, yes, I can. So, we're not minding our own business. We see we need to create a, um, a fetch saga, and uh, the fetch saga, as I said, has some like initial values, and we initialize them with our side effect function and with an action which is going to be dispatched. So right over there. So yeah, now we get an iterator object out of it, and this iterator object is. Uh, yeah, it has this interface as I described before. So it has the next method. And so we are still the middleware and we know we need to, um, we, we need to work with this generator. So uh, 
we want to tell the middleware, uh, the, we want to tell the generator to fetch me this link. So we pass in this uh, data, and what internally happens is the next will pass this data uh, to the assignment in the yield. So now we pass the data to the yield. Now we know this is a happy path, and it should yield a call effect. So we check in this return value, we check if this is a call. So you can see that we, we just use the utility functions over there. So we have the call with the HTTP get. This is a little bit. Um, at the beginning, I was also confused. At the beginning, it was also confusing. Uh, yeah, if we are losing the, the first next. So it's actually now you have to try it out. It's actually um, it will be initialized, and yeah, sometimes you have to try it out. Sometimes it's like no, it's not like how to say. Sometimes it feels like it's a one ahead. So sometimes you have to call it first. No. Anyways, no, just, just let me explain here. Okay, I'm, I'm, I've passed my five minutes, okay. Anyways, yeah. Um, we can communicate with the iterator. Yes. We had some funks in there, um, but we had not so many, so I decided to, to rewrite it to Sargas. I would like to ask you about uh, complexity and uh, line of code. How does it compare? Uh, how much code and read it to So in my opinion, there is not much of a difference. Uh, the difference lies in the files you need since uh, the sagas are isolated in different files. So you have your action creators, which are pure, and then you have just like a separate folder with your sagas, and that's it. So yeah, in my experience, there is no big difference of, of like boilerplate. Actually, in the sagas, it's easier uh, because the error handling is, is not as complicated. Okay, thank you very much. Okay. Yeah, so my time is over. Thank you very much, and have a great evening.